I now have the privilege of introducing Fatima Muhammad, Director of the Impact Aid Program Office at the U.S. Department of Education. Fatima has more than 25 years of experience in the field of education. Prior to joining the Impact Aid Office nearly a year ago, she served as a Supervisory Education Program Specialist in the Office of School Support in the Office of Elementary and Secondary Education at the Department. This group consists of Title I, Part D, McKinney-Vento, Title II, Part A, Title III, Part A, and foster care programs. She has also worked as an instructional system specialist at the U.S. Department of Defense Education Activity, Office of Student Support Services, and Special Education Branch, and has experience in education at the local level and in the private sector. We now turn to her pre-recorded remarks, and when they are complete, Fatima joins us live for question and answer. Please enter any questions you have in the chat box. Thank you. Afternoon, everyone. My name is Fatima Mohammed, and I am the director for the Impact Aid Program at the U.S. Department of Education. It is a pleasure to be here with you today to provide updates on behalf of the department. Today's session, I will cover updates related to payments, fiscal year 2022 applications, our electronic data collection process, and we have exciting news about the progress we've made with the Impact Aid grant system and results from our grantee satisfaction survey. And I also have the pleasure of introducing to you new staff that have joined the Impact Aid program office. Let's start with updates related to payments, final payments for fiscal year 2020. Um, several of you have probably been wondering when we will make those final payments. As you recall, the statute changed in 2015 with the enactment of the Every Student Succeed Act. But fiscal year 2022 is the first year we have used the methodology of calculating final payments because it's the first year since 2015 that we have funds left to distribute after paying each LEA as a proration of 100%. In the past, we would have distributed final payments by increasing the proration above 100%. Now, unless the LEA has been paid its maximum under B1 or B2, we added a constant to each LEA's lot to raise its payments. For example, if your LEA's lot is 40% and the ratable increase is 1.5%, we will calculate the LEA's final payment by multiplying the LEA's maximum basic support payment by a lot of 41.5%. Then we will compare the results to the LEA's calculated final payment for the prior year to determine whether the LEA qualifies for a whole harmless payment under 7003. The team is working diligently to make these changes in our IAGS system. We hope to have updates and information to you very soon and eventually distribute the final payments for fiscal 2020. So let's start now with 7003 payments for fiscal year 21. We are off to a good start with making initial and interim payments for fiscal year 21. I do want to take a moment and rec recognize the work of my team. As most of you know, we received several CRs for this fiscal year. And due to the work of the team, we were able to make payments every time we receive funding through a CR. So as you see on this screen, we've made initial and interim payments have been released at 90%. And you also see the amount for children with disability and the number of LEAs that are eligible. In regards to GCD, please stay tuned. We hope to have information to you very soon. Please pay attention to announcements coming from our portal in regards to GCD. For heavily impacted districts for 2021-B2 payments in process for 44 applicants, our goal is early spring. Last year, we had the same target goal, 
of April, and that's what we're aiming towards this year. For 7002 payments, the foundation payments released the amount thus far is 64.5 million was paid today. Last year it was 65.6. And again, last year our target was April. We have the same target date for the remaining funds for 7002 for fiscal year 2020. 2022 applications, yay. We're you know, impact aid is so cyclic. We have so many different fiscal years in play at the same time. So just was a reminder, the late application deadline is April 2nd. If you haven't submitted your application or you need help, please reach out to your program analyst. And the deadline for amending your application is June 30th. The number of applicants received for fiscal year 2022 and the late applications. 20 were late for 7003 and 5 for 7002. With this year's application, as all of you know, we were heavily impacted, the LEAs, by the coronavirus. Taking that into consideration, LEAs had the option to use the Impact Aid Corona Relief Act from HR 8472 of using last year's data. We had 182 7002 applicants take advantage of that flexibility and 663 7003 applicants take advantage of that flexibility. But keep in mind, the late application deadline still applies in this situation. For fiscal year 2022 application field reviews, right now the team is working diligently to prepare to get the letters out. Hopefully by the time you see this presentation, you would have received a letter regarding a field review if you have been selected for a field review. Our goal this year is to complete 140 field reviews using our risk um, assessment to determine which LEAs will go through the field review process. For example, we're looking at new and non-continuing applicants, applicants new to the electronic data collection process, number of years since the LEA was last reviewed. Those are just some examples of the various criteria we look at in determining selections for field reviews. Uh, electronic data collection, this is some very exciting news. On this screen, you see the fiscal year 20 and 21 pioneer, um, pioneers pilot and those that are under review for fiscal year 2021. And I have some exciting news in addition to those that were um, in the initial year and the following year. For fiscal year 2022, we had several LEAs inquire <coughs> about becoming a part of the electronic data collection team. And several of those opted out because of HR 8472, but then we also had seven that will be a, of the new cohort for electronic data collection. Hopefully you've been able to participate in the breakout session that took place earlier today where several districts had a chance to talk about what the process has consisted of and you've had opportunity to hear about lessons learned. And Robin Gregory from our office who has led this work also participated and hopefully shared a lot of good information from what has occurred over the last couple of years surrounding electronic data. So if you are interested in electronic data collection, I highly encourage you to reach out to our team. We have a new lead for the program, Nicholas, and his contact information is on this slide. So please feel free and Nick will work with the, um, his team to get you the information that you need to move forward. In regards to discretionary construction grants, um, the status is pretty much the same right now. We are still working with the LEAs on their respective projects. Um, some of them may have experienced delays due to COVID. 
but know that they, as they reach out, we are providing technical assistance to them. But these are the, the funding distributions that have been granted thus far. IAGS, some exciting news. Last year, when we spoke, we told you that the following updates were coming, such as field review functions, payment calculations, and full communication capacity and new voucher layout. I am happy to say that we've been able to accomplish those goals. And in addition to those goals, we also have new workflow for sending in corrected documents after review. You will have the opportunity to use that. Payment calculations and vouchers as stated have been processed through the system. And when we send that communication, so please, please, please pay attention <coughs> to the announcements that come from the IAGS system and also updates on our portal. And here's the link to our portal. And another thing, especially if you're new to Impact Aid, our webinar schedules are there. The team is hosting Surviving Your First Field Review, New to Impact Aid, IPPs, a wealth of training there. And we look forward to working with you through those trainings. Last but not least, before I announce some of the new staff, the grantee satisfaction survey I wanna to talk to you about. Over the last couple of years, the department has been increasing the number of major programs that participate. It's gone from 24 to 38. But what I wanna share with you in a moment is the results for Impact A. What do we do with the results? We use the feedback you give us to improve our practices, to provide quality resources, customer service, technical assistance. That's what we're here to do is to serve you, to make sure you can receive the funding you so need to serve the children that you serve. Impact Aid response rate. Impact Aid program, the, there are 200 invitations sent out for 7002 and 7003. As you see, we're sitting at a 48%, 50% response rate, and the department is sitting at 53. To me, that's unacceptable. I really wanna see an increase because that means you're telling us what you need and therefore we can respond and provide you with some resources to make sure you're successful at what you do for children. And that consists of submitting a successful application. We wanna make sure the resources on our site are things that you need and you can maneuver. So our goal this year is to increase the response rate and increase the rating for the various responses. So please, 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 we need you. When you receive the invitation, please respond. It shouldn't take very long with the questions. Okay, the survey will come out in May or June. If you have any questions, reach out to your analysts or send us a message. Mm -hmm. Now, and I'm very excited to introduce some new staff. Some of you may have met them already because they all hit the ground running. Alejandra Villalopos, she is a program analyst. Nicholas goes by Nick, she goes by Ale. Di Toronto, a senior analyst. Both of them are new to the department. And Michael Thomas, who most of you know, especially if you apply for 7002, he received the promotion. He's now a, a senior program analyst. We also have, I believe for the first time at Impact Aid, an uh, intern. Her name is Carolyn Kelly. She's with us for the spring from the University of Redlands in California. So welcome them if you haven't had a chance to do so already. So once again, I wanna thank you for allowing me the opportunity to provide updates on behalf of the program office. And if you have any questions, please, contact us. On this screen, you will see various means to reach us. I would say the best first step is to reach out directly to your program analyst because their goal is to work directly with you. We also have our generic impact aid mailbox, which our staff check routinely. And then the portal. And also if you haven't joined our Gov delivery listserv, please do so. So I wanna thank all of my staff, including my group leaders, Katie and Kristen for the hard work that they do. They really work collaboratively together with 
the analysts to make sure we can provide you with the best service. And thank you to Hillary and her team for all of what they do on behalf of Impact A. So I will pause now to see if you have any questions. Hello, Fatima. Hi, Hillary. How are you? Good. It's wonderful to see you live. Thank you for joining us for our second uh, um, conference with you. Oh, thank you for having me. It's kind of odd watching yourself in video and then going live, but well, <laughs> it's you did a, you here. Did a great job. So we've got. Um, uh, just about 10 minutes for some Q&A. So um, I want to ask our audience members, if you have some questions for Fatima, please type them in the chat. Um, I've got a couple to get started with. Uh, before I ask you our first question, I do want to also thank you and your team for all of the work and support that you have done, especially through this very challenging year and helping our school districts to get their applications in on time. We know a uh, number of your staff were working late hours and, and helping helping many of, our, many of our school districts. So thank you. Thank you. And I wanna say to my staff, please feel free once Hillary starts the questions to respond to the questions in the chat so we can get through as many of those questions as possible. Great, terrific. So I'm going to start with a larger question that's not an impact aid related. Um, okay. Miguel Cardona was recently sworn in as Secretary of Education. So curious, has he met with Department of Ed staff, provided any direction, any kind of insights you can share with our community about the de uh, department under his watch? Okay, uh, that's a great question, Hillary. Thank you. And I will say that Dr. Cardona met with the staff immediately. We had a all staff, ed wide, all regions from headquarters, which we'll consider to the region offices. And my, I was just going first before I even talk about what he said, my first impression of him was that he was very humbled and honored to be in this position especially starting as a classroom teacher to now be the secretary of education. And that came through immediately as he began to speak. But his message to the staff was one pretty much very similar to the message we've been hearing from the administration in regards to diversity, equity, and inclusion for all students as he takes on this new role and considering taking on this role at a time when we're in a pandemic. As you know, some of his work in Connecticut to what his mission here at the department is, I guess the directive from the administration is to get students back into the classroom safely. So that's been, I would say between that and just the whole message of being very inclusive in practice and equity and diversity as we do the work of serving children and serving schools. Thank you. So another question that kind of flows from that with regard to COVID and getting schools back face to face, um, where can school districts find additional resources relating to COVID uh, from the department? Okay, I think that's a great follow up question because school districts and campuses all across the United States, I'm sure, are looking for additional guidance from the department and technical assistance, thinking of best practices as to what other school distance, school districts are doing. And we cannot forget the social, emotional, and mental health as students and their academic needs. The department has a website where there's a wealth of information about CARES Act relief, remote learning resources and other FAQ and fact sheets for various programs, such as fact sheets regarding English learners. And I'm gonna ask Amanda, oh, Amanda already did from my staff. Thank you, Amanda, to put the link in the chat. So that's the, the link where they could find that information. Great. So a couple of impact aid specific questions. Uh, this was the second application cycle using IAGS. Were there any common questions or technical assistance needs that your staff was fielding? And maybe could you share any answers or suggestions so we don't duplicate the same questions that we had going through the process this time around? Okay, all right. 
Another good question, Hillary. <laughs> so I can think of um, two things after talking with my staff that would help in getting this information out to our grantees. One is surrounding the IAGS system in regards to if the LEAs who applied last year, if they didn't go back into the system and activate or use their account since that time, they have to go back in and update their passwords every 120 days to stay active. So if they get to the application period and then they can't get in and they're waiting to the last minute and they haven't reactivated their password that creates unnecessary panic. So maybe every time they update or change their password, they put a reminder on their own calendar. I gotta go back into IAGS to update my password. They could also use the Get Help page on our portal to reactivate early during the application window and not wait to the last minute. That would definitely help. And I think another thing after speaking with the team that they shared that we saw, I guess, several times, I would say the one of the number one problems is LEAs counting children who live on Indian land as live on or work on if their parents also worked on the federal property. And you aren't able to select properties of types for Indian land on the table as a live on property. But when applicants can't find the property to come up in the search, they enter them as a new property. Indian land children should count on the Indian lands table to receive the highest weight in the payment formula. It doesn't matter where their parents work. So keep that in mind. They are cutting themselves short if they try to force something else. So that's what they should choose. Okay. okay. They actually get less if they claim under civilian living on or working on. Right. So make sure that any student who lives on Indian lands is identified as living on and don't you don't need to mention that if the parent works on. That's that's great advice. Um, I also think that you were pushing and giving good advice. Don't wait till the last minute. Uh, please uh, get your applications in as early as possible uh, so, um, so that you don't run into these last minute glitches. Right, correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about the electronic data count, which uh, we did have the session earlier today and congratulations to the entire department team to um, having launched this new pilot and it's going really, really well from all of our school districts that are participants. Um, can you um, talk about that in addition to the EDC though, this year the department did release information about other kinds of digital options to count students such as uh, digital signatures or emailing other things. Can you just mention them or just remind us that these would, will still be valid approaches for this coming year? Um, absolutely, but I want to remind everyone that please, especially if this is new and you're going to try something different, please, 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 as Robin stressed in the breakout session earlier, as I'm saying right now, reach out to your program analysts. We do not want you to do something and then you end up not being eligible to move forward. Um, DocuSign is another flexibility districts can use. But please remember that that's different than EDC. So don't assume that these two things are the same. And this year, as you know, as I stated in the pre-recorded, we had a lot of districts that took advantage of the HR 8472. Mm -hmm. Reach out. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Fatima, and that's helpful. That goes right into our closing question about reaching out to staff. What's the best means to communicate with the Impact Aid Office and staff? Um, Hillary, as you know, all of us are still home teleworking. It's been a year, and I want to commend my staff, first of all, because we haven't missed a beat. You know, well, we picked up our laptops, brought them home, and we've been full steam ahead ever since. We've been on board. Um, to additional staff members virtually. With that said, the best means of communication is contacting your program analyst through the link that's provided. If someone from the team can put the link to the staff 
assignments in the chat for the participants in the conference that would be helpful. That's the best means and through our portal. We, the phone line is answered, but we get very, very few calls on the, call, on the phone line, the generic phone line. So that will probably go away and the staff will call you back. They will call you back and set up a Teams meeting. If there's a challenge, they will also ask you to set up maybe a Zoom meeting. They will work hard to make sure they can have a phone conversation with you, respond to you in writing. So TA and providing support, that is very important to me and it's very important to our leadership overall in the department and important to the staff that serve the various states. So email, find out who your contact is and or use a portal or email the Impact Aid generic mailbox. Mm -hmm. Well, Fatima, thank you again and thank your team again. Uh, we mm -hmm. look forward to continuing to work with you. And if you have any other last parting words that of wisdom that you'd like to share with us. Um, no, just continue to stay safe and continue to do the great work that you do for students and know that the impact aid students uh, are considered a very special population serving our military community, serving our students on Indian land. And it's important to this administration, important to us as a program office. And just know that we're here to help you and assist you to make sure we can get the money out quickly. And that consists of making sure you are able to submit your application and we can answer any questions that you have in the process. Right. Well, thank you again. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Thanks for having us. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.